Yeah, and we'll talk about that, Paul, and a lot more with M- Mickey Bruckner. And again, he's from Annex Sports. He's been working with Daniel Jones. You can find him on Twitter at Mick, M-I-C-K, all one word, Bruckner, B-R-U-E-C-K-N-E-R. And he joins us right now from Annex Sports. Mickey, you got John Schmelk and Paul Dottino here on Giants.com and the Giants mobile app um, in different parts of New Jersey. Hope you and yours are doing well and you had a good weekend. Yeah, guys, thanks for having me. Appreciate your time. No, no problem, Mickey. So let's start here very briefly. As you headed into this offseason working with Daniel, we know what a workaholic he is, and he, he likes to you know try to improve himself. What were the things you focused on with him for main areas of improvement that he tried to work on this offseason? Yeah, I would. So we this is our second year working together. Uh, we got a chance to work for about a month before quarantine last year. Um, but we, we started back up again, uh, I'd say about mid-March this year, and Last year was a little bit more like arm throwing mechanics, things like that in terms of like passing and, and things of that nature. But for this year, you know, obviously he's built upon a lot of the stuff we worked on last year. Um, and my job is, a, you know, by nature I'm a strength coach. That's what I do. Um, so I, I look at biomechanics, whether it be in the throwing, whether it be moving. Uh, and my job is to say, okay, these athletes are, are, are performing at a very high level already. Uh, what can I do – to get them better, right? Like, what's the lowest hanging fruit where these athletes can improve? Um, you know, and he, he had some lower extremity uh, injuries last year that kind of uh, derailed his his season. And, uh, you know, so a lot of the stuff was kind of working back on building some better biomechanics from the foot, from the ankle, um, on, the, on the way up the chain. And so for him, building a lot of, you know, lower body strength, getting his feet to, to move properly, to, to absorb force and then distribute force, so that, you know, for him as a passer, the biggest thing we want to see is their ability to stay under control in the pocket. Um, and whether that's, you know, going into like a quick reset, delivering a ball, whether that's going and moving their hips underneath their shoulders and then evading pass rush or getting out and scrambling. Um, a lot of that stuff is kind of building a foundation in terms of, you know, all kind of feeds into it, uh, into, you know, into everything. So that was kind of the biggest stuff we were looking at this post-off season um, and then continue to work on as he's approaching, the, you know, training camp in the season. So, Mickey, going into last season, I'd say he gained about 10 pounds or so. You could see he was maturing physically from the time when he was a college player at Duke. Where is his physical maturity now that he's entering his third NFL year is he still developing or do you see him where he's going to be and does that change your plan of attack as you try to mold him you know the more you work with these higher level athletes you know the more time you get with them it's always about like what again what's that lowest hanging fruit what can we improve upon I would say he's uh he's matured a lot more in terms of uh mentally how he needs to approach his training um, you know, last year, he, you know, more was always more for him. He wanted to do as much as he could. And I think practically speaking, the more you play, the more miles you build up on your body, like that starts to have uh, diminishing returns. And so for him, I think he's got a little bit more matured in terms of that approach. But I also think for him, like I said, is, you know, we're building strength, we're building power, we're building speed, and that's all great. But what are some of the other things that, that necessarily haven't been looked at, haven't been touched upon that are going to build some more resiliency, um, build, you know, a little bit more strength and, and speed as it relates to a quarterback? So making sure, you know, obviously he needs to perform, but what are we, what are we doing now also to keep him from, you know, having any potential injuries? And I think that's the biggest thing that for him is his, his lowest hanging fruit is that we can we need to make sure we're, that we're addressing those issues um, going into the season. So You know, Mickey, and I think this goes to what you were talking about in your first answer, but I just want to follow up just so the, the audience is clear on it. I think one thing with Daniel, we know what a great athlete he is, his speed, his ability to run after he scrambles and things of that nature, but what maybe we haven't seen from him is as much is using that athleticism as a means – to throw the ball once he kind of evades that rush. When you're talking about the biomechanics, keeping your shoulders underneath you, it, are those the types of results that you're looking for that, you know, be better at avoiding that rush and then turning it into a pass rather than turning it into a run because he's keeping his shoulders and his hips centered and all those sorts of things? Yeah, it's kind of one and the same. And so if you look at, if you're if you're in the pocket, right, you, you drop back and let's say it's called a three-step drop and he, he needs to reset into a pass or he needs to turn his hips and evade sure. some type of pass rush. His ability to 
flip his hips underneath his shoulders while they're still maintaining downfield is going to give him the ability to get out of position and reset and get away from a pass rush. But it's also going to improve his ability to put that right foot in the ground and deliver a strike, you know, put, put a ball with some pace behind it and making sure that, you know, again, those two things are one and the same. You know, if he, if he can't absorb force and then translate into, you know, from the ground up to his, you know, whether it's, again, evading a pass or scrambling or just as something as simple as, as delivering like a quick slant. Like he needs to be able to do those things and do them effectively. And if he's, if he's losing power, if he's losing a lot of strength at the feet, those are the biggest things, you know, it's like, it's like if you, as soon as you start to provide horsepower to a car, you need to upgrade the, the braking system. <laughs> and I think that was the biggest issue with him was, you know, he was extremely good at producing force. You know, he was strong. He did, he, that's not an issue for him. For him, it's can he decelerate, can he absorb force, and then translate into uh, producing force. That was the biggest disconnect for him going into this offseason as far as I'm concerned. Interesting you should go there, Mickey, because I remember when he came out of Duke, there were some folks, okay, and I'm not saying we were one of them because we weren't, who questioned whether or not he had the deep ball arm strength to be a real winner in the NFL. But from the time he got here, and he certainly showed it last season, his deep ball was fine. I, I would say he's got above average arm strength yeah. to get the ball downfield. When, when you looked at him from the time you first got a hold of him last year to where he is now how do you grade his ability to unload that football well that was so one of the things you know we talked about the stuff that we did last year um building some better bi- biomechanics for throwing a deeper pass um you know something that i've brought to working with the quarterbacks i i train is you know things like long tossing and and stuff from like the baseball world and applying those types of uh modalities is that i think that's something that he's reaped the benefits from you know that's something we're also doing this year is you know once a week we're we're out there long tossing and trying to build distance on his his long ball and I think that's something where he's just he started to use his body better you know realize that deep balls are not you know just arm strength it's the ability to use the whole body and generate power from the ground up and again all that like I said earlier it all kind of works together and I think that's something that he's really starting to figure out how to generate power and, you know, as it relates to, like, a deep passer, so. Yeah, and you know what? I think the, the, the power on the throws is great, but, you know, Mick, for me, the big difference last year was the accuracy on the deep ball as opposed to year number one. Was that accuracy, which I'm sure is part of the biomechanics and keeping everything in line, a big part of what you guys worked on? And, and did you see that result on the field last year? Because if you look at the numbers and the metrics, his deep ball accuracy last year, he maybe he didn't throw quite as many as others, but his accuracy on those deep balls was right at the top of the league. Did you see the stuff that you worked on last offseason pay dividends when you saw him on Sunday in the game with those deep balls and the accuracy behind them? Yeah, I think if you're practicing throwing the ball farther and farther, you're just building your efficiency. So if you know going into the that year his his deep ball let's call it 50 yards now that's 60 to 65 yards he's just approving his you know operational capacity and his ceiling is just going up and up so you know what used to take him 100 percent of his effort to deliver a strike now it's you know he's working more efficiently so you take that over the course of a game over the course of a season like that just builds efficiency mm. and um, you know as a passer like that that's something that you want to see so. Mickey, we've seen on Twitter, and we told the people about it right before you came on, that you have some of these uh, video clips of Daniel doing some of the footwork as he's dropping back into the pocket and then doing some horizontal movement as well. When you go through all of your training techniques with him, does he have receivers to throw to? Are you actually going through the play itself to where he says, look, these are some of the plays that I want to be able to throw uh, can we run through some of those plays, and do you have receivers to be on the other side of those passes? Or is he simply going through the motions and then like a walkthrough, not actually delivering the football? Yeah, he does that stuff um, with with his teammates and, and gives himself other opportunities to build some rapport with his receivers. With me specifically, you know, we talk and say, like, you know, what a game-like scenario, what are some of the things that you're going to be dealing with? So, Keep in mind, this, the, the drill that you're referring to is, is a multiple-tiered progression 
that we've built a foundation on starting back in mid-March. So a lot of the stuff that we had done prior to all that was being able to decelerate, being able to absorb, not have any like upper body trunk sway or things like that when he's putting his foot in the ground. Because a lot of times you look at a quarterback who's unbalanced in the pocket, they're kind of just leaning and letting their center of mass take them where they want to go, but they're never really under control. Because again, if I'm moving and I'm evading pass, uh, pass rush, I need to be able to stay balanced and at any point in time, again, either uh, scramble or put my foot in the ground and deliver a strike. So that's one of the biggest things is as we've progressed him along here, he's built the proficiency. And, and uh, again, the biggest thing is control that center mass over his base. Um, but, yeah, he, you know, for us, it's more or less just kind of walking through some of the biomechanics of, of what he's going to face in, in the game. But as far as, you know, that's kind of coming along further in the progressions. Now he's, you know, doing his stuff with his teammates. So I don't want to be redundant with some of the stuff that he's doing on the field. My job as a strength coach is more or less just to say, again, what is he not getting? What are some of the specific things that I can provide that's only going to add value to him as, as, a, as a quarterback? So. Does that stuff you think have an indirect impact, Mickey, on his ability to protect the ball in the pocket? Because that's something that he's been trying to improve upon when he gets hit, holding on to the ball, being in control more to your point, not getting that trunk sway of the upper body. Does that all contribute, you think, to perhaps improve ball protection? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And he did that last year. We saw that. The, ev- the evidence was clear. Yeah, I, I think he's, again, for him, it's the, the more exposure he gets to this stuff, he's figuring a lot of stuff out. Like, it, you know, he's, this is constant iterations on his part year after year. The more time he's, he's got in these opportunities, you know, he's just building better, better experiences and, and better iterations from the previous year. So. All right, Mickey, Mickey, you, go ahead, Paul, finish up. I could, yeah, if yeah, I could go with one more, and I know your time is limited, final one from me. You're a scientist at this. This is what you do. <laughs> So when you're looking at him on the field this year, you'll be looking for specific things that may give you inclinations or, or, or should I say evidence as to what he did and what you tried to teach him. For the common fan out there who was watching on television or watching from the stands, what do you think they will see as the biggest difference coming as the result of the training that you have given him? I think the more a quarterback can be consistent with their footwork and create some continuity, the better their timing improves, the better their accuracy improves. I think the more things you can control before ball release is going to increase his, his uh, efficiency. And I think that's the biggest thing is he's learning how to use his feet better, which in turn, you know, a lot of times you see issues at ball release, things happen prior, right? You're, there's, there's, something that's gone on with the kinetic chain there's there's a bit something going on with the biomechanics so for him i think the better he's controlling his feet the better from the ground up he's he's under control the more consistent he's going to be with all those things so mickey final one for me and again thank you so much for your for your time today you're very generous we talk about it from the outside looking in and from what we hear from other people but you work with daniel directly can you just give an idea for the fans out there because we talk about it a lot what his work ethic is like and what is it like working with Daniel as he tries to improve and become a better quarterback? Uh, I mean, it's an absolute pleasure working with him. Um, You know, obviously it's fun for me to work with these guys at this level. Um, But I think for me, the biggest thing is that he's always trying to look for ways of improving. And I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of really good athletes and the ones who stick around for a while are, are just that, you know, they have that white belt mentality where they're always trying to look for ways of, you know, getting better, or doing things better, um, and not just the really com- complex, difficult things, but the simple things. So, and I think he's he's very uh, very intuitive when it comes to stuff like that. So, Mickey, we really appreciate the time. Here's your shot. Tell the folks um, what they need to know about Annex, what you're doing, where they can find you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, well, I appreciate your time, guys. Um, the Annex is a sports performance facility. We're located in Chatham, New Jersey. Uh, myself, we've been a, we've been around for about 15 years. Uh, I work with exclusively overhead throwing athletes, so quarterbacks, pitchers uh, of all levels. So um, it's been fun, and obviously working with the guys like Daniel has been a great opportunity. So awesome stuff! You can find them on Twitter at Mick Bruckner again, M I C K O N Word B R U E C K N E R N X sports performance in Chatham. Mickey, thank you so much. Get back to work, my friend. We'll talk to you down the road. Thanks so much.
Great All stuff, right, Mickey. Thank you. Thank you.